JPA Buddy is a plugin for IntelliJ IDEA that helps with everything related to Jakarta Persistence API by providing development tools for Hibernate, Eclipse Link, Spring Data JPA, Liquibase, Flyaway, etc. It's intended to make development faster thanks to rich code generation capabilities, database reverse engineering, smart inspections, and better navigation via a data centric view of the project. JPA Buddy supports Java and Kotlin. You can use it in any project with Spring Boot, Jakarta Enterprise Edition, Quarkus, Micronaut, or even without any framework. In this video, we'll create a simple project management service. We'll use Spring Boot Framework for this. Please don't forget to create an empty PostgreSQL database for this tutorial in advance. Let's create a Spring Boot application using the Spring Framework Starter website. We'll use Java 11 and Gradle as the build tool and the latest stable Spring Boot version. The application will be deployed as a JAR package. Also, let's use meaningful names for the application. For the application, we'll need the following libraries. Spring Data JPA, to use JPA and data repositories in the application. Hibernate Validator, to enable data validation for the entities. PostgreSQL Driver, for database access. Flyaway, as a database versioning tool and Spring Data REST to create REST endpoints for data repositories. JPA Buddy detects libraries attached to the project and enables the corresponding features. For example, Entity Attributes Validation won't be available if you don't have Hibernate Validator Library in the project's class path. Now, let's download, unpack the project, and open it in the IntelliJ IDEA. First, let's add connection parameters to the Application Properties file. Your connection parameters can be different. When we open a new blank application, we usually ask ourselves, how do I create entities? Which annotations should I specify for entities? And how do I create DB migration scripts? The JPA Buddy plugin will assist you with answering those questions. Let's install the JPA Buddy plugin from the IntelliJ Marketplace. Start typing the plugin name in the search field. Select and install the plugin. You can see the JPA structure window that will help you deal with the JPA subsystem in your project. Let's set up a DB connection for JPA Buddy. We'll need it to generate database versioning scripts. JPA Buddy can detect existing connections in configuration files, so let's use this feature. Now we can create entities. With JPA Buddy, we can create entities right in the source code tree using the context menu. Right click on the package icon and select a new JPA Entity Creation menu. Enter the entity class name, App User. For entities, we'll create a sub package under the main application package. As we can see, the entity class name is marked with a red line. This is JPA Buddy's inspection work. It notifies us about the primary key absence. Let's fix it. Please pay attention to the JPA Palette window. We can choose a proper element for the current object in the editor. The palette is context dependent, so you'll see different elements for different objects. We can add a basic attribute to the app user entity by double clicking on the corresponding palette object. Let's add a mandatory name attribute of the string type. Add one more field, password. It should be optional. Now we can create the project entity. Let's add the primary key using JPA Palette. Apart from double clicking on the element, we can use the drag and drop approach. Now we can add the project name, a mandatory string attribute, and the project start date. Let's have a look at the context-dependent JPA Inspector window. It allows us to edit the selected object's properties. For the start date, we'll set a validation rule. Project start date must be either in the past or in the present. Now we need to add a manager for the project. It'll be a reference to the app user entity. Double-click on the association in the JPA palette and create the reference field. Field type, app user. Field name, manager. Cardinality. Many to one. The field will be mandatory. 
Finally, let's create the task entity similarly to the project entity creation. For the task entity, we'll define a name, start date, end date, and an assignee, user. Project entity is the aggregation route for our data model, so let's add tasks collection to this entity. We'll enable cascade operations for the task to update the whole entity graph at once. With JPA Buddy, we can generate database versioning scripts based on a difference between the current database schema and the existing JPA data model. Let's do it. In the JPA Structure window, select the Diff Versioned Migration menu. We'll use Model as a source for comparison and Database as a target. We can review generated migration scripts and exclude some before saving. Apart from the generated values, we can create migration scripts manually using visual editors. Let's create the initial data, a couple of users for the application. To simplify script creation, JPA Buddy provides SQL code snippets in the JPA palette. We can drag and drop them to the migration script and fill in the proper values. Spring Boot Framework will apply migrations automatically at the application start. Now we're ready to start the application. Click on the Boot Run task in the Gradle Tool window. You can see the database creation log in the Run window. Our application doesn't have any API yet, but we can check if it's available by sending a request using the Postman tool. Now we can see the response from the application. Now we can create Spring Data JPA repositories and expose them as REST API using the Spring Data REST library. We need to stop the application before doing so. First, let's create a CRUD repository for the project entity and add a method to search for the project by name. We'll put the repository to a separate sub-package, Repositories. In the JPA palette, let's select a Find Collection Code snippet to create a method. The method will return a list, select the name attribute, and is operator. The search will be case sensitive. That's it! The repository and its method are ready. To speed up the search, we need to alter the database schema and add an index for the project table and name column. Let's open the entity source code and double click on Index in JPA Palette. We need to select the Name column in the Columns list. Let's generate a migration script for the index creation. Let's add one more method that will be used to search for projects with unfinished tasks. We need to select all projects that contain tasks with a finish date equal to null. The method name doesn't look great. Let's rename the method but keep the query. We're ready to try the application REST API. Start the application. Open Postman to test the application's REST API. Let's see the endpoints list first. As you can see, we have REST API endpoints for projects. Let's create two projects with tasks and managers. We need to create a POST request to invoke the project's manipulation API and pass a project, references to managers and its tasks with assignees in the JSON format. For the first project, we'll make all tasks finished. The second project will contain one task with an empty finish date. Now we can execute a query to see the created projects. The assigned project IDs are displayed in the corresponding URLs. The custom search methods are available as well. Let's have a look at those endpoints. 
we can see two search methods that we defined in the repository earlier. Let's search for the projects with unfinished tasks and see the results. JPA Buddy is a perfect tool for anyone working on data-centric applications. In fact, you can develop an entire CRUD application or a simple microservice by spending nearly zero time writing boilerplate code. In this video, we've created a CRUD Spring Boot service for projects and tasks management using IntelliJ IDEA and JPA Buddy. Thank you for watching.